For improved system performance, long-term financial returns, and less risk on your PV projects, look to the proven performance of DuPont Materials and Solutions. Hello and welcome to this week's PV Tech newscast. Coming up, financial troubles hit Centrotherm Photovoltaics and SolarWatt, while solar cell producer Photovotech close to collapse. And this week we have three exclusive executive level interviews from InterSolar Europe. Centrotherm Photovoltaics, the second largest equipment supplier to the PV industry, is in financial troubles after their insurance firm cancels coverage for materials deliveries. The founder of the company, Hans Altenreith, has stepped down from his board position, while the management team discusses its cash flow position with banks. Belgium-based solar cell producer Photovoltaic has issued a statement regarding the possible winding up of its operations after generating losses of €120 million Euros last year. The company is majority owned by French firms GDF Suez and Total and was a spin-off from research centre INEC. And German module manufacturer SolarWatt, reported to be filing for insolvency, now claims it is seeking to secure support via the courts to restructure and bring in new investors for its system's business growth plans. This action comes after getting only one of several long-term investors to go along with the new strategy. More on all of these stories, as usual, on pv-tech.org. At last week's major industry event, InterSolar Europe, the PV Tech News team caught up with many industry executives and can now bring you the following exclusive interviews. Firstly, PV Tech's senior news editor, Mark Osborne, spoke to semiconductor powerhouse TSMC Solar about their SIG's thin film operations. A key challenge for thin film, including SIG's, is obviously getting the cell efficiencies up, the module efficiency up, so that it can clearly compete with the way crystalline has gone. Can you give us an idea what's going on as far as the efficiency of the module is concerned? We are right now, we've got a, a, about a 12% efficient product. We've got a 130 watt module. And, and it's, it, as, as you point out, we, we recognize certainly it's lower than crystalline. Uh, we, we have a very extensive R&D effort at, at, at how do we increase that and, and through production changes, through process changes, and, and get that efficiency up uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, it's, it's certainly uh, something we recognize and, and uh, that combined with our temperature coefficient advantages uh, we think it enables us to be competitive with crystal silicon. So what you're saying then is that, yeah, there's, there is a, a very good focus, a very strong focus at the moment on in the R&D aspect of this, uh, you know, of this type of module and, and the technology that you've got. There, there is, I mean, let's be candid, the, the market uh, is, is challenging right now. Certainly the, the price drops that the industry has seen over the last 12 months have, have, uh, have I think, caught a, caught a lot of us off guard. So, so we are fortunate in the regard that, that we don't have a, a gigawatt capacity that we've got to try to place. Uh, we've got, a, again, a very great, a great product that we're, out, we're deploying in, in the initial quantities and markets, and it's giving us the time to really focus on that R&D effort, uh, drive our cost structure down, drive our efficiency up, so that we are positioning ourselves well for 2013, 2014. Certainly, as, the, as hopefully the market increases, we'll be a, you know, have an even better product than we do today. Major PV manufacturer LDK Solar has received a lot of attention in the media and financial community recently about its financial condition. His founder and CEO, Mr. Peng. There's been a lot of uh, noise in, uh, in the mainstream papers about uh, the financial uh, health of, of the company. Can you, in your terms, you know, uh, how do you react to that? What, what is your view of the financial conditions? Of course, um, there are a lot of um, uh, things talking about LDK Finance, especially after announce our our first quarter result. But uh, you have to be aware, we most of our debt is about more than three uh, billion dollars, um, based in China. So most of our our debt have already in last year proven it can be renewable, and most of our uh, debt in China are, are renewable. So for us, this is another concern for us. Only uh, um, uh, debt we have for overseas is 250 to 160 million dollars, 
um, bonds we owe, we issued last year, but I still do April 2014, still two years, I think, for a size of LDK, and uh, we have more than $2 billion, $3 billion per year in revenue, we can, in the next two years, definitely we can handle um, a bounce about $250, $260 million uh, debt. So we are very confident LDK will be uh, keeping service the um, solar industry in the next 10, 15, 25 years. So we are very, very confident of the, the LDK advantage uh, for both technology and uh, scale size and the cost ownership and all these things can move in LDK uh, a leader and a uh, strong player in the solar industry. And finally, Finlay caught and finally, Finlay Coville from MPD SolarBuzz gives us his take on one of the most talked about subjects at InterSolar this year, emerging markets. One of the things I've come across during, uh, during the show is people talking about emerging markets, uh, seeing that the U European market is mature. What, what's going on with emerging markets? Where are they? Mm. Well, I guess there's, there's actually two ways that you need to look at emerging markets. One is short-term emerging markets to satisfy immediate demand in 2012. So, for example, in the second half of this year, there's a significant demand coming from countries in Asia-Pacific that were never considered to be major standard markets. So this is countries such as China, India, Japan and Australia. So these are the short term emerging markets for this year. Longer term in terms of 2013, 2014, now you've got much more of the globe opening up. Countries across Southeast Asia, um, South America, um, Middle East, um, and Af Central Africa and South Africa. So emerging markets are important, first of all, to satisfy the immediate demand for the second half of the year and then it's part of a longer term strategy in order to have a greater number of countries contributing to overall demand. Now uh, from that perspective are we talking uh, about potentially an, uh, an increase in gigawatt installed this year uh, compared to last year or are we looking at pretty much a flat market considering that um, uh, many are, uh, are believing that like the Europe European market is saturated or maturing you know, is there, does it actually have any real impact? Um, yes, absolutely. And this is largely driven by the size of the market that's coming on from China in the second half of the year. If you look at 2011, it was a 20, 27 gigawatt market. This year at the moment is looking like something in a range of 30 to 35 with the inevitable unknown end of year wild card. Now, the reason that the emerging markets are so important this year is they're providing growth compared to last year. It's no longer a case of looking at Germany and Italy and the US market as being, and the other European markets as being the reason why 2012 might be bigger than 2011. So this year, the emerging markets are providing the growth compared to last year because the European demand was strong in the first half of the year and then the second half of this year is all about European uncertainty. So emerging markets are filling the gap that the European demand can't satisfy for the second half of the year. Well, that's it for another week. Make sure to keep visiting the PV Tech website for the full length video interviews from InterSolar Europe over the coming weeks. Thanks for watching.